OpenAI stands as the leading company in artificial intelligence. Their latest model series, the Zero One series, represents the most advanced AI technology currently available to us. Remarkably, this AI model has been cloaked in secrecy. If you attempt to ask the model what it was contemplating during the process, it responds in an unexpected way. It warns you not to ask such questions again. If you repeat this action too many times, you risk getting banned from using OpenAI's services. The reason behind the secrecy surrounding this is that it's a significant step towards AGI. Many believe OpenAI is likely to be the first company to achieve this milestone. With that in mind, there's been a lot of curiosity about how this system works. OpenAI has shared various insights, including several publications to shed light on their approach. However, we haven't yet reached a point where we fully grasp what's happening behind the scenes. Recently, a group of researchers from China published a fascinating paper that has us wondering, have they finally cracked the code? Did they uncover the secrets behind O1 and provide a roadmap for creating something similar? So this is the paper titled Scaling of Search and Learning, a roadmap to reproduce GPT-4 from a reinforcement learning perspective. This paper could be a game changer. If its findings hold true, it signifies a major shift in the AI landscape. The playing field would be leveled, paving the way for other companies to develop AI models that rival open AIs. I'll break this topic down into four parts. But first, let's dive into the fundamentals of how this AI technology works. One of the first concepts we come across is reinforcement learning in AI. To explain this, let's use a simple analogy. Imagine you're teaching a dog a trick. When the dog performs the trick correctly, you give it a treat as a reward. Over time, the dog learns to repeat the action to earn more treats. In the context of AI, reinforcement learning works similarly. Here, the dog is a program, the treat is a digital reward, and the trick could be anything from mastering a game to writing code. So why is reinforcement learning significant for the O1 series? Open A. I believe that reinforcement learning is central to making O1 so intelligent. It enables one to learn how to reason and solve complex problems through trial and error, effectively mimicking human problem-solving processes. According to the research, there are four foundational pillars that underpin this learning approach, which we'll explore further. The process consists of four key steps that work together to enhance the model's performance. It begins with policy initialization, where the model's initial reasoning abilities are established through pre-training or fine-tuning, forming the foundation for its functionality. Next is reward design, which determines how the model is incentivized to achieve desired outcomes. This step plays a critical role in shaping the model's behavior. Following this is the search phase, where the model explores various possibilities during inference, essentially thinking through different options to find the most suitable outcomes. Finally, there is the learning phase, where the model improves by analyzing data generated during the search process. Techniques such as reinforcement learning are applied to enhance the model's capabilities over time. The central idea underpinning this process is reinforcement learning, which ties these components together in a continuous improvement loop. The model, or policy, interacts with its environment, where data flows from search results into the learning process. This process updates the policy, which is then fed back into the search phase, creating a self-sustaining cycle of refinement. The diagram illustrating this emphasizes the cyclic nature of the system, where search generates data for learning, learning updates the policy, and the improved policy further enhances search. This loop ensures that the model continually evolves and becomes more effective. To understand how advanced AI models work, it is essential to first grasp the concept of policy, which forms the foundation of their functionality. Teaching an AI is akin to teaching someone a complex game like chess. You wouldn't start by placing them in a match against a grandmaster on their first day. Instead, you would begin with the basics, how the pieces move, fundamental strategies, and common opening moves. Similarly, policy initialization in AI is about building a strong foundational understanding before tackling more complex challenges. For advanced AI models like Zero One, this foundation is established through two main phases, pre-training and fine-tuning. In the pre-training phase, the AI is exposed to an extensive amount of text data, 
enabling it to understand how language works, how words relate to one another, and to acquire a broad knowledge of the world. This phase is similar to allowing the AI to read a large portion of the internet, helping it learn grammar, vocabulary, and basic reasoning abilities, skills akin to learning foundational concepts before attempting to write a novel. The second phase, fine-tuning, provides the AI with specific lessons on reasoning and problem-solving. This involves two techniques, prompt engineering and supervised fine-tuning, SFT. Prompt engineering guides the AI with carefully designed instructions or examples, helping it analyze problems, break down tasks into manageable steps, and approach challenges systematically. Supervised fine-tuning, on the other hand, involves training the AI using human problem-solving examples, often showcasing step-by-step -step reasoning provided by experts. Together, these phases ensure that the AI is equipped with essential language skills, reasoning capabilities, and problem-solving techniques. This process, known as policy initialization, is crucial for setting up the AI for success in its learning journey. It not only provides a solid foundation, but also enables the development of human-like reasoning behaviors, allowing the AI to think systematically and explore solutions effectively. This foundational approach ensures that the AI can efficiently tackle complex problems and perform with a level of reasoning comparable to that of a human expert. Next, we delve into reward design, a fascinating aspect of reinforcement learning. On the screen, you'll notice an illustration showcasing two types of reward systems commonly used in this domain, Outcome Reward Modeling, ORM, and Process Reward Modeling, PRM. Let's break it down. Outcome. Reward Modeling, ORM, evaluates a solution solely based on its final outcome. If the final result is incorrect, the entire solution is deemed wrong, even if most of the steps leading up to it are correct. For instance, in the example provided, some steps in the solution are accurate, but because the end result is wrong, the whole effort is marked as a failure. Process Reward Modeling In contrast, PRM takes a more detailed approach. It evaluates each step of the solution individually, rewarding the correct steps and penalizing the incorrect ones. This method provides granular feedback, enabling targeted improvements during the training process. In the example, steps 1, 2, and 3 are correct and receive rewards, while steps 4 and 5 are flagged as errors. This approach not only pinpoints specific mistakes, but also avoids discarding an entire solution due to a single incorrect outcome. The diagram emphasizes the value of process rewards in tasks involving multi-step reasoning. By offering iterative feedback, it facilitates better learning outcomes and continuous improvements during training. This granular approach is likely what OpenAI's GPT-4, or similar models, uses for enhancing performance in complex tasks. Now, this is where things get really interesting. We're diving into AI thinking and search processes. Many experts have highlighted search as a key factor that could propel us towards superintelligence. I recently came across a tweet emphasizing this idea, which I'll include on screen. When we break this down, AI thinking involves a powerful system like 01 exploring possibilities to find the best solution. This process, often referred to as search in academic papers, is about deliberate exploration. Think of it like brainstorming multiple ideas, refining drafts, and making edits until the final product is polished, just like writing an essay. Instead of generating just one answer, the AI evaluates multiple possibilities before settling on the optimal one. This method is not only practical, but essential for improving performance during inference. Two strategies for AI search. The paper highlights two main strategies that AI systems like Zero One use for this thinking process. Tree search. Imagine a branching tree where each branch represents a possible choice or action the AI might take. Tree search involves exploring these branches to see where they lead. For instance, in chess, an AI analyzes all potential moves and their outcomes, building a tree of possibilities. It then uses criteria to decide which branches to explore further and which to prune, focusing on the most promising paths. This process is akin to a gardener trimming branches to help a tree grow in the right direction. A simple example is best of end sampling. 
where the model generates several possible solutions and selects the best one based on specific criteria. Sequential revisions. This is like drafting and editing an essay. The AI starts with an initial attempt, then refines it step by step, improving with each iteration. For example, solving a math problem might involve generating an initial answer, checking for errors, and revising until the solution is correct. This process mirrors how we review and refine our work to make it better. Guidance in AI Search and Revisions The effectiveness of AI search depends on how it chooses which paths to explore or which revisions to make. The paper identifies two types of guidance. Internal guidance. This involves the AI relying on its own knowledge and calculations to direct its search. Examples include Model uncertainty. The AI estimates its confidence in different parts of the solution. If it's unsure, it explores alternatives or revisits certain areas, much like double-checking your work. Self-evaluation. The AI assesses its own work to identify errors or areas for improvement, acting like an internal editor that reviews and suggests changes. External guidance. This is where feedback from the environment or external sources help steer the AI's search. Examples include environmental feedback. The AI interacts with a real or simulated environment to evaluate its actions. For instance, a robot navigating a maze might receive feedback on whether it's closer to or farther from the goal. Reward models. These provide feedback on the quality of solutions, guiding the AI toward better outcomes much like a teacher grading and offering advice on improvement. How AI learns and improves. The combination of internal knowledge and external feedback allows AI to effectively explore possibilities and refine its solutions. This process is a cornerstone of what enables systems like Zero One to excel at complex reasoning tasks. The search process shows how AI approaches a problem, but the real question is, how does it get better at solving problems over time? This is where learning comes into play. The paper explains that AI uses a powerful technique known as reinforcement learning to enhance its performance. In this context, search generates training data. Recall how search produces multiple possible solutions. Well, these solutions, along with feedback from internal or external sources, create valuable training data for the AI. You can think of this as a student preparing for an exam. They might try solving several practice problems, receive feedback, and learn from their mistakes. Each attempt, whether successful or not, provides important information that helps them improve. The paper outlines two primary learning methods that AI might use while processing search-generated data. The first is policy gradient methods, such as Proximal Policy Optimization PO. These methods are complex, but the basic idea is that the AI adjusts its internal policy which is the strategy it uses to choose its actions based on the rewards it receives. Actions that lead to high rewards are more likely to be repeated, while those with low rewards are less likely to be chosen. It's a way of refining the AI's decision-making based on its own experiences. PO, which stands for Proximal Policy Optimization, is a popular policy gradient method known for its stability and efficiency. It provides a careful, methodical way of updating the AI's strategy, ensuring that changes aren't too drastic based on any single experience. The second method is behavior cloning, which is simpler. Here, the AI learns by mimicking successful solutions. If the search process uncovers an effective solution that yields high rewards, the AI can learn to replicate that solution in similar situations. It's similar to how a student might solve a math problem by studying a worked-out example. The paper suggests that AI might use behavior cloning to learn from the best solutions found during the search, adding them to its pool of successful strategies. It could also serve as a way to warm up the model before using more advanced methods like PO. Ultimately, the combination of iterative search and learning is where the real power lies. The AI conducts a search for solutions, learns from the results, and then applies its improved knowledge to perform even better searches in the future. It's a continuous cycle of practice, feedback, and improvement. This continuous improvement is essential for enhancing one's capacity to achieve superhuman performance in specific tasks. By consistently exploring and learning, 
AI can overcome the constraints of its original training data, potentially uncovering innovative solutions that humans haven't yet considered. Now that we've covered the basics and the four key pillars of how AI works, do you think we are close to achieving superintelligence? After going through this research paper and gaining a deeper understanding of the intricate details of AI, I can see why many in the AI community believe that superintelligence might not be as far off as we once thought. If an AI can not only search for solutions but also learn from those results, then use the enhanced knowledge to improve future searches, we would have a continuous cycle of practice, feedback, and improvement. In theory, this could lead to superhuman performance. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next part.